What's up, Tarantula Collective? My name is Richard, and welcome back to Tarantula Tuesday. Afonapelma calcotis, or the desert blonde tarantula, is a terrestrial New World tea from southern Arizona and northern Mexico. A. calcotis are famous for their blonde hairs and chill demeanor. Females are usually a solid tan color, while males normally have black legs, a copper-colored carapace, and a reddish abdomen. This is a slow-growing species that takes years to reach maturity. These tarantulas can grow to about 6 inches, with males living between 6 to 8 years, while females can live over 25 years. The husbandry for this species is very typical of most New World terrestrials, so you will want to provide an enclosure with more width than height. As spiderlings, I keep mine in standard spiderling enclosures and provide plenty of substrate and a hide as they like to burrow, especially when this small. I keep the substrate dry and provide a little water dish or drop water on the sides of the enclosure. About once a week or so, I will moisten the substrate then let it dry out completely. For juveniles, I move them into a basic juvenile enclosure and provide them with a hide and water dish, ensuring there isn't too much height as to avoid them climbing the walls and falling, risking rupture. And as adults, I keep them in a 5 to 10 gallon enclosure on dry substrate with a hide and water dish and provide at least 4 inches of substrate. I keep this species at the same room temperature as most of my spiders, 68 to 72 degrees, though you can keep your slings at a slightly warmer temperature in an attempt to have them grow faster. If you're comfortable, they're comfortable. When it comes time to feed, I feed my smallest sling confused flower beetles, cricket legs, or pre-killed tiny crickets twice a week. As they grow larger, I feed them small crickets or roaches. Once they're juveniles, I feed them one to two small or medium crickets once a week. And once they're adults, I feed my female two to three large crickets a week. One thing to note with this species, they are prone to go on hunger strike, not eating for weeks or months at a time, usually when weather begins to get colder outside. My smallest sling hasn't eaten pretty much all winter. This species is usually very docile and calm, but this temperament differs between individual tarantulas and even between molts of the same tarantula. Though they tend to be relaxed, these teas can be defensive and kick hairs, show a threat pose, and even bite. So always check the temperament of your tea before attempting to handle. You can do this by touching it gently with a paintbrush or straw and seeing how it reacts. And always remember to handle at your own risk. This tarantula has mild venom, and the danger of handling is more for the tarantula than the human. If the tea were to suddenly bolt while you were holding it, there is a great risk of a fall and the abdomen rupturing. So if you decide to handle your tea, always try to handle them over a table or while sitting on the floor, so the distance of a fall will be greatly minimized. This is an amazing tarantula and a perfect species to add to your collection, whether you're a beginner or a more experienced keeper. Don't overlook this tarantula just because it is a native species to the U.S. It is always tempting to gravitate towards the exotic and brightly colored teas from other countries. But there are plenty of amazing species right here in America. And this is definitely one of them. It's a gorgeous display tarantula and makes a perfect addition to any collection.
What a cool tarantula. Now mine is a sweetheart. She's never kicked any hairs at me or given me a threat pose or anything like that. Now I don't handle my desert blonde tarantula very often. In fact, I think I've only handled her two times. The first was when I got her and was unboxing her and getting her into her new enclosure. I couldn't resist handling her a little bit and taking some pictures. The second was when I was rehousing her into her permanent enclosure. Beyond that, I really just don't have the time or desire to handle my teeth. But if I did so feel inclined or I had somebody come over to visit that was really insistent on handling a tarantula, that would definitely be the one I go to first. Now just because she doesn't kick hairs at me doesn't mean I shouldn't worry about them. This tarantula will kick hairs around its burrow as a line of defense. So when rehousing or cleaning the enclosure, always keep that in mind that there may be some urticating hairs in its burrow or on the cocoa fiber. And if you want to see more photos of this tarantula as well as all my other teas, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm always posting pictures on there and you can watch this collection grow with me. Now this tea doesn't do a whole lot of webbing. It will web the inside of its burrow and a thin layer of web on the ground around its burrow that it uses mainly to sense prey coming into its vicinity. An interesting fact I learned about the Arizona blonde tarantula while researching it is that it doesn't have a lot of natural predators. There's one species of fly that will lay some eggs on its back and the larva will eat the tarantula. And of course there's a tarantula hawk, which is a wasp that will sting and paralyze the tarantula and carry it off to its nest where its eggs, once they hatch, will eat the tarantula. Definitely not a good way to go. But they essentially pose no threats to humans at all. They will usually run and hide anytime a human comes near. And they actually help us out by controlling the insect population. Now this tea is fairly cheap and readily available, so if you don't have one, definitely check it out. And there are plenty of other tarantulas that come from New Mexico, Arizona, Southern California, and Northern Mexico. Uh, they all live in that same area. Some of them even look very similar to the desert blonde tarantula. But technically they're different species and they're a little more rare in the hobby, which means they'll be harder to find and probably a little more expensive. And a special thanks to the members of the Tarantula Collective that were kind enough to let me use some of their photos of their personal Arizona blonde tarantulas. I just wanted to mix it up a little bit and show some pictures of other people's Arizona blondes. Now if you like my t-shirt, you want to get yourself a Tarantula Collective shirt, check the link down below in the description. It'll take you to our Facebook page where we have all the information on where you can buy those. There's also stickers and pins available. And if you want access to some merchandise that's not available for sale, as well as some early access to these videos, join me on Patreon. All of our supporters get a free magnet, as well as other gifts that will be coming in the future. And if for any reason you just want to know what's going on in my mind or get some updates on making videos or whatever's going on in the collection, I've got a Twitter. You can follow me there. We've also got a Tumblr and a Reddit community, but we're all over social media. I also got a package recently from Josh's Frogs. I'm putting together an unboxing video right now. So if you're interested in seeing that or any of my other content, be sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you get alerts anytime I post new videos. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button. It means a lot to me and encourages me to keep making these videos. Now I'm really curious about what your experiences have been with the Desert Blonde Tarantula. So do me a favor and leave me a comment down below. Let me know about the temperament of your tea or how fast or slow it's growing or any other details that you think might be helpful to our community. And if there's any species you would like to see me cover on Tarantula Tuesday, leave your suggestion in the comments down below. I'm making a list of everything everyone has suggested. It's getting pretty long, but there's a lot that keep coming up over and over again, so they're getting moved to the top of the list, and I'd really appreciate your input. And we can continue this conversation in our Facebook group, so if you haven't joined already, just go to the Tarantula Collective on Facebook, join our group, be sure to answer the questions so we know you're not a bot. And join our community, it's a lot of fun. We've got a 10% discount to all of our members from Fear Not Tarantulas. So once you've joined the community, just send one of the moderators a message and ask for that discount code and we will hook you up. And be sure to hit that notification bell if you want to get alerted for videos in the future once they're posted. I am putting together the video for the top 10 old world tarantulas right now. It's probably the video I'm the most excited about making. So keep an eye out for that in the future. And as always, it's been real and it's been fun and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>